This is The Scene on BBC Radio London with Ori Styler. This is The Scene. That's right, that is Duncan Barks who will be on directly after me at 10 o'clock, so make sure you stay tuned and listen in to him. i got my next guest in the building. Good friend of mine, a content creator and a podcaster as well. Probably one of the first ones I can say I've, been, I've listened to for the longest time. And uh, he's always remained consistent. It's not easy to do that, bruv. What's going on, Marcus Bronzy? Hey, how's it going, man? I'm good, sir. How are you? I'm good, thanks. My toes are fine. Thank you very Your much. Toes They've got are a couple out, bruv. of mentions. I just want to say Your I've got... toes are out and they need to disappear, bruv. Nah, man, they're, they're, they're scene stealers. And I just want to say... <laughs> That's because got... people go, what the hell are they? They're good toes, though. They bruv, are good toes. There's no... Do you know what? You and... You're not a toe man. No, no, not yours especially. What about your own feet? When you look at those, you don't look at those in disgust though, do you? You look at those, yeah, they're your own feet. But I appreciate other people that appreciate them. So I would cover them up saying, look, I respect everyone else's atmosphere. Do you know what? I've had many compliments about my toes. They're nice, they're moisturized, they're (laughs) pedicured. I've had two pedicures this week. Bruv, yeah, the sun's out. I, I prepare myself for these. I don't know how to. I don't know how to address this. Flip flops on. You could t- flip flop. There's no yellow here, bits. Bruv. There's no crusty bits. I don't business. The toes bruv. are smooth. They're you, like hands. You and uh, you and big shout out to my brother Atheon Crockett. <laughs> you two, when it comes to talking about, to- you know, he just he described his feet as having he had thug feet. Oh, thug feet. No, but he said they're thuggish because they're so cool. Okay. How do you describe your feet as having thug feet, bro? When someone says they got thug feet, I'm I'm automatically throwing going up for, like yeah, signs like and stuff. The toes yeah. are throwing up signs, and that's not good. Your footwear's wrong. If your toes are doing <laughs> that, you need to assess the size of your footwear. He's a tall guy. Maybe he needs to get a I don't know a size twelve or a thirteen instead of eleven or a ten because crip feet. I don't want those. <laughs> I don't want my I don't want my toes crip. throwing up. <laughs> I don't want that. That's the new one, yeah. bro. Marcus, man, it's been a minute, man. How are you? I've kind of just say big shout out to you uh, for your new uh, podcast as well. Tell us about that firstly. Thank you very much. Uh, that's the switch. So yes. I've actually been very privileged to be uh, a finalist in an award uh, ceremony called Launch Pod. Yes. I'm one of three finalists and I actually got to create a podcast, which I've been really meaning to create for a few years now. Mm. A lot of people have their own meaning when you say podcasts because there's loads out there. There's a great range of content out there when you listen to podcasts. This is a documentary uh, that follows technology in a way that I don't think anyone has done over here in the UK. Mm. So the whole point of the switch is looking for people that change the way the world works with tech. And the story revolves around a, a very interesting young man called Joshua Browder, who was very tech savvy. He's so tech savvy that he... I won't mention the brand, BBC and all that, but um, he made <laughs> he made an app for his favourite uh, cafe when he was younger, shall I say, or, or coffee shop. Okay. And he put put it on the app store and the app was so good that Apple thought it was a real app. They front paged it, put it as like the, the, the app of the day or the app of the month. Oh, wow. Uh, and that and said, app, uh, said store came up to him and actually said, look, this is so good. You're a young kid. It wouldn't be good press for us to sue you. So how about we take that app off your hands? And that app now has developed into their actual app. So he did that when he was like 14 years wow. old. Uh, and when he was 19, uh, he got a parking ticket and it was wrongly issued. He wasn't very happy with it. Uh, And he was very worried. He didn't know what to do. So he wrote a letter and got himself off the parking ticket. And he found that in his area, a lot of people were getting incorrectly issued parking tickets. So he was writing a letter for his mum, a letter for his cousin, a letter for someone else. He's like, oh, this is long. I know how to make apps. So let me make an app that helps you get off your parking ticket in 30 seconds. Can you tell me this one? Because I need to download this app right now because I've got way too many tickets sitting. It's it's a website as well. Do not pay.co.uk. Yeah, I know that website. Yeah, yeah, Yeah. that's the one. I know the website. Yeah, so Joshua made that. Oh, Um, big shout out to Joshua. And I used it and it, it helped me get off an incorrectly issued parking ticket. But then in this documentary, we find that Josh actually uses the same technology, which sounds like something that helps you with a relatively trivial thing. He uses yeah. the same technology that he used to make this app. By the way, or he's actually downloading this I'm app now, as I'm we speak. For it now. Do not pay, um, yeah? .co.uk, yeah. Okay. But it's a website. I think over here, they're, they're getting the app over here. It's okay. definitely available in the US. But he used the same technology to help people with sexual health issues, help people with homelessness, and also help to combat immigration worldwide. Okay. Right? So the story about how he does this is absolutely amazing. So that's what The Switch is about. It's one of uh, three podcasts. There's three finalists in Launch Pod. I'm one of them. The, the other two podcasts are amazing as well. And uh, basically the winner gets a full season commission. But to be honest, it's a story that's that I love so much. And I'm always going to be looking for people that are changing the world through technology. So, you know, to be fair, I'm like... <laughs> you're, a te- I'm, you're a tech head big time as well. Yeah, man. but I'm not like... Would you, is this fair, Ori? Like, you also like technology, but Big is it time. fair to say I'm not like somebody who would put you off the talk of technology when I talk about it? No, like, no, nah, nah, you're uh, even down to when you 
it's not even just a conversation you've had with people on your previous podcast, How to Kill an Hour, but when you've talked about different things that you've done, which is tech based, mm. or when you've when you've when you went on that shark thing that on, on the Thames, <laughs> right? That to us, it's, it's not necessarily tech. It's like an experience, but it's a cross between tech that has been built for us to go and be like a shark on the Thames. Yeah. But as well as that, you people listen to it and they feel engaged because it's deeper than just, oh, well, it, this is what we do and it looks like and it has the specifications of A, B and C. You give a dimension to it where people go, I, I this is kind of as if I was there experienced in myself. Yeah, man. It's like, I think we had a conversation a little while back before I had a smart watch. Yeah. And you, I was like, oh, I don't, I, I never used to be invested in smart watches because mm. I was like, my phone does everything else. Why do I need a smart watch? This is just an extra thing I have to put on another thing I have to charge. Yeah. And you were like, Marcus, I can unlock my laptop just if I'm wearing my <laughs> I watch. Did. I think I said that to you, yes. And I was like, you mean I don't have to put in my password one two three four five six seven eight? I don't have to put that. In, oh, whoops! I don't have to put that into my into my laptop. I can just do that, and and that's the kind of conversation that we have on how to kill an hour. It's kind mm. of like your best friend. If you turn to them and say, "Shall I get this phone next?" We're like that friend that will say, "Yeah, get this phone for this reason. If you want to take pictures, get this phone because it's sick for this." And we also have a bunch of great guests, including yourself. You mm -hmm. popped on the show, and then we do experiential stuff as well, like the submarine. <laughs> That, that I was mad. basically was a high speed like Ori and I didn't describe it well. It was like a high Sorry. speed submarine that, that I rode around the Royal Docks. You're, you're basically a shark. Yeah, is what you yes. are, bro. You're painted like a shark. You're in a machine that makes you feel like you're a shark yeah. on the Thames. I enjoyed shark life. <laughs> it was good. Shark life. There you go. Shark life. Hashtag shark life. And my toes were out in it as oh, well. Oh, bro. See, why did you have to ruin a good thing? <laughs> we were having a great conversation right there, and you just had to fling in that nasty talk, man. Oh. Gosh, man, can you just retract that statement? Or we just can we just edit that out somehow? I know this nah. is live, but can everyone just? I don't know. If I had that Men in Black, there's a piece of tech we could have. Every time we see Marcus's toes, the Men in Black, the, the flashy thing that makes people forget, that would be perfect for us at this point in time. I mean, stop me when you're ready, but like my toes are going quite. A, All right. A so the guests you had, <laughs> so the guests you've had on your podcast, <laughs> <laughs> the guests you've had on your podcast, Edit Bowman. Uh, Jaguar Skills, KSI, yeah. Yeah. Uh, Neil from Radio One, Hostage Negotiators, Undercover Operatives, who are actually secret agents. 100%. So somebody that could not share their identity. So we had to uh, modulate their voice. Wow. Um, they had to give us a fake name. Uh, they also so adjusted they their accent for us. They really exist. The scariest thing about meeting a real MI, I think MI6, MI5, MI6 operative is how unassuming this man was. When he walked into the room, with no disrespect, if you are listening, <laughs> I did not, he did not look like somebody who had done the things that he had done. Like this guy wow. flippantly said, we said something about there being a situation happening in another part of the world where there was going to be a big change in leadership yeah. a little while back, right? Don't want to mention certain names. And um, he was, and we were like, huh, I bet you got to go to work. And we were like, he was like, yeah, yeah, you, you might not see me for a few years. And he, at the moment, he's not contactable. We don't know where he is. <laughs> it's, it's crazy, right? <laughs> this is real, real Yo. secret agent stuff. Hey, that's mad. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Ooh, imagine yeah. that could be anybody. We this walk, you walk past someone, and that could be some Black Widow style kind of secret agent. Yeah, yeah. Like he's seen. Man. Like I ask him questions that are probably not appropriate for this time of day. Yeah, yeah. And. I know it's a podcast, so you can't see him, but you can hear in his voice the thousand yard stare that he gives you. Like I ask him some almost obnoxious questions, but I got kind of asked by the audience to ask him them. And the things that he's seen, you know, you, you know when you look at someone's face and you ask them a question, like when if you see Ori out and about and you ask him about my toes, the look on his face is gonna show you, gonna that show you what he's seen. <laughs> the delight in his face. Delight yeah. scene, okay. Yeah. Um, so, yeah. <laughs> so yeah, we've had some great guests on there as well. Um, and, and we just like to bring them on. And what's great now is as the, when they come onto the show, they kind of bring their tech chat as well. Yeah. So a lot of people that you wouldn't expect to be very techy into outside of their work, even like Jazzy Jeff, as he's very technical. Yeah, I remember. You, yeah, Jazzy Jeff for one of them. That was really yeah. good. Yeah, he was a really good guest. He's very technical on, in terms of technology when it comes to mixing. But yeah. Outside of that, he's got a massive interest in technology, you know, uses a lot of it for his cooking as well. So yeah, every guest that comes kind of brings their own spin on their opinion on tech. And because mm. it's such a lifestyle thing, we've all got a phone in our pocket. We've all got something techy that we like. Nice. Wow. 
Does he's ever as well, you know? That's deep. What a le- yeah, I was starstruck, man. I, I can't, but you just had him sitting there chilling and talking. Yeah, yeah. That yeah. is mad. <laughs> yeah, such a cool guy. Such like I've heard, I've heard he's he's really nice to, yeah. to to be around and to work with. Very humble and just very laid back. Yeah, I mean, he's just clocked the game. Like, if you're a DJ, you love him. If you're not a DJ, you love him. He's he's been doing this for thirty years. First ever uh, Grammy for hip hop was won by him and Will Smith, I believe. Yeah. Uh, feel free for someone to correct me, but you know, so he's 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 clocked the game. Yeah, he's know? done it. He's Shout done bits. Jeff. He's done yeah. bits. You're doing fantastic as well, outside of podcasting and content creating as well. Uh, I believe just complete production your first feature film, Hyperlink. Yes. Tell us a little bit. Yeah. Um so so the first produ- uh, so the feature film's called The Risen, Risen Possession. Yes, yeah. yeah, it Risen Possession. Um, it's a sequel, um, and I said hyperlink because that's right there, so it shows me where the link is. <laughs> I've blended that. I kept that. That's cool. I like how you blended that. In. Yeah. <laughs> Let's just pretend like it didn't happen. I said hyperlink, and, and what it showed me the link. That's what happened. Yeah. You, no, I'm gonna throw that, you off real quick. Is your second toe longer than your first toe? There so, we go. Now we've forgotten it. So the so, reason possession. So the, the reason possession. So um, <laughs> <laughs> it's part of a series of horror films. <laughs> the first one was based in the in the fifties. Um, I'm not in that. Uh, the second one is based uh, in 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 today today's okay. times. And um, I play Adam, who's the main protagonist's brother. Uh, and we have to, we're young children who are going on an adventure during their summer holidays, as kids do, uh, mm-hmm. when, when they're not looking at screens. And we find a set of tunnels. We go down into those tunnels. Okay. Uh, we roam around those tunnels and we find some forces that were meant to have been locked away in the first Risen film mm-hmm. uh, and obviously made it into the second Risen film. And yeah, it was a great experience actually being amongst some real talented actors as well. So you've got Marcus Butler in there, Aid Edmondson, nice. um, Sally Phillips is in the film as well. So to just be on a lineup with some great talent like that and, yeah. and myself, not a classically trained thespian at all, uh, you know, it was great to just learn so much in an acting environment. So you get to see me, a range of emotions from me, um, no toes. Thank God for that, <laughs> bruv. Thank goodness for that. And as well as that, uh, not even just in terms of the stuff that you create, you are a feature on, um, is it Evil Genius with Russell Kane? Yeah, so yeah, yeah, it was on, on Evil Genius with Russell Kane. Yeah. I just want to say that is a great podcast that comes he, from the BBC Studios. Yeah. Um, how, he's a cool guy, right? Brilliant. I was with, I did a five live with him on Thursday talking about social media. Yeah. Fantastic guy. M- mad energy. Yeah. yeah Fantastic. Yeah. Guy. yeah. Plugged in, like really plugged Big in. Big time. Really does his research as well. So yeah, Evil he knows Ge- his stuff. Yeah. Yeah. It's really good. And, and Evil Genius is, um, I think you'd love to be on the show. I reckon Russell, get him on. Um, the premise behind the show is you find, they find somebody who's very well known in history. So yeah. alive or dead. And they basically pull out a whole heap of facts that shows you about the evil things that they have done throughout their life. Uh, But a lot of the time, these people that uh, that, that we highlight are known as geniuses. So you've got the likes of Steve Jobs, you know, Charles Dickens, people that are just known throughout history. And then we have to, at the end of the episode, after hearing a lot about what they've done throughout their life, decide on whether they are... Are evil or geniuses and i've got to say there's there's a few themes that run through some of the most successful people out there in the world throughout there's, history there's everyone's got a dark side yeah man. everyone's got a dark side it seems do you think sometimes like the thing that makes some people great is sometimes one of the darkest things about them 100 percent. i'm sure there are some um if I, I can't remember who it was wasn't it wasn't the i th- was it it wasn't the cannonball or something it was some kind of weapon that was created or some kind of virus or something yeah. that was created because initially it wasn't made to be a weapon, but because it was made and it ended up being so destructive. I think it might have been in a, a nuclear bomb. Yeah. That was created as a source of energy, but they realized we actually could blow some stuff up. Exactly. With this. Yeah. So yeah, it, it, you go into dark places when you are yeah. in that yeah. when you are a genius, I guess when you could see the the good and the bad you can do with what you're able to yeah. to create. So yeah, yeah, I can imagine there are some real dark places and yeah. people. Yeah, out I mean, there. you look at some of the time, like some periods in history where there's massive technological development. Yeah, prior to to now, it's been during like war. Oh, you yeah. know what I mean? That's so so out of out of really dark places, you can get some genius things. So that's kind of the the theme that we explore. Iron Man, for example. Yeah, I, exactly, Iron Man, <laughs> Venom. There Venom, we go. There you Venom. go. Look yeah, at that. Yeah, yeah, there we go. Real life, real life examples <laughs> like that. That's exactly what I mean. You know, <laughs> Stranger Things. Exactly. There, there you, you go. go. There you yeah, go. Real See? life. Yeah, but, in, but in real life, you can. People that are, yeah. I mean, war, war breeds uh, creativity in terms of new ways to sadly destroy your enemy and yeah, yeah you're right in saying that so yeah. i can imagine there's many evil geniuses that you've been able to go which which was the most evil for you 
That would be surprising. You know who's got even. some skeletons? Dickens did some dark stuff. Charles like this, Dickens. Yeah, Charles Dickens, the guy that the writer. wrote Oliver. The writer, Charles Oliver, Dickens. Yeah. Please, sir, can I have some more? Him, the guy that wrote that, yeah? What dark did he have? Oh, I, he was... Is it for radio, is it not? No, no, we, uh, I'll allude to, 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 to the episode of the podcast, but he was known for really being able to to pluck one's emotions, right? And, 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 and tug on your heartstrings, mm. right? It's like he was totally ignorant to anyone else's feelings at certain points. In fact, he'd drag people close to him right through the dirt and okay. do things to them. But at the same time, be writing a book about this poor little boy, Oliver. It's almost as if he was experiment on, experimenting on people thinking, oh yeah, that hurts them. Okay, let's put that in a book there. Wow. It was, it was it's like so dark, some of the stuff he did. But gave us some great books. <laughs> I don't know if that... I don't know if that's... <laughs> I don't know if that is level, if that's allowed to... Yeah, I don't know, bruv. That sounds mad. Yeah, no, it's, it's very interesting. It, it is to, to look back at the achievements of somebody and, 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 and what they went through to get there and what yeah. they did to other people is, is, is all joking aside, a very, it's a very interesting thing to look at, you know? So, yeah, so that's, that's evil genius. Wow. Yeah. And Marcus, I mean, what's, what's... I mean, I know you've got these... There's no... It's the switch is kind of... It's fresh, but it's still a growing baby. But yeah. what else is in the, in the pipeline for you? Uh, so I'm currently writing uh, a new online TV show based around technology called New Phone Who This. The premise of the <laughs> yeah, show. I like that. I like that name still. <laughs> yeah, it was it was it was a uh, it was a bit of fun trying to get that past the execs. Like New Phone Who This? No, no, New Phone Who This? Uh, new Phone Who's This? No, no, no New Phone yeah. Who This? So it's <laughs> a new phone, and you say hello, who's this? And they're like, I'm like, no, 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 no. But uh, we got there eventually, and. Um, it literally is a show where we get a new handset, a device. We talk mm. about the things that it can do, and then we take it out on the road and really try it out. Okay, do you know what I mean? It's a very simple idea. Uh, I'm surprised someone else hasn't done it yet. I'm glad that I've done it first. Amen. <laughs> Amen. Hey, keep that. Yeah. Man. So um, every time a new handset drops uh, that we think is worth highlighting, we get our hands on it, have a go on it, and try it out. So yeah, new phone. Who this? Look out for it online. Nice, nice. And what's your social media, sir? At Marcus Bronzy, M-A-R-C-U-S-B-R-O-N-Z-Y on everything. How to kill an hour is how to kill an hour on everything. And hashtag new phone who this. And no. hashtag the switch. There you go. Nice, nice. Marcus Bronzy in the building. You're not going anywhere. Sticking around for a little bit. Of course, man. Nice. We're going to get some topics in. But if you've forgotten what you're listening to.